Hello, 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 and welcome to Nellyville Reviews Drag Race. And let's just get into it and talk about season 16. We've already had two episodes, but no one has gone home yet, but we have had the lovely talent shows. I think that it is a great way to open up the season so we can see what everybody is about, get, get a little taste of what the girls are gonna bring. Now, I will say episode two so far, I was feeling it a little bit more. Let me know in the comment section down below was episode one giving it to you was episode two for me i feel like the second group now that I, I i love i love the dolls so far everybody i see i see potential in everyone but it was something about episode two that really gave the va va boom for episode one so lots of fun things happening this season so the girls are getting immunity uh, we're bringing back immunity. We have not had that in many, many seasons. So this ought to get interesting. And the girls get to rate each other. And the girls who won get immunity for a future challenge. Now, RuPaul was sure to say for a future challenge. So I I'm sensing a twist. There's going to be some schemes and some plotting. It's not going to be as obvious of, oh, the next episode, if you're in the bottom, you're going it, to, it's, it's, it's going to be a twist. I'm sensing a twist because he, the way he kept wording it, but I'm here for it. Let's get messy girls. So for the first episode, we had some special guests. We had Derek Barry, legendary queen of RuPaul's Drag Race. So it was nice to see Derek Barry there helping to host the talent shows. We also had Love Connie in the first episode. I, I was very random, but isn't, I mean, isn't that the whole shtick of Love, Connie? And then, of course, the special guest judge was Charlize Theron. Um, Charlize, I know, is, is really famous, really popular. I'm going to be honest with you. I, was, I wasn't that excited. Um, if she was a special guest on like the third or fourth episode, okay, fine. But the first episode, but but that's coming from me because I don't, I'm not really familiar with her. Like I, I know her as the Dior girl, as the perfume girl. Um, I mean, I enjoyed her in Untucked. She was great, but I, she wasn't like how Ariana Grande popped it. Well, anyways, it's not like how Ariana was and you're like, oh, Ariana, like I, I wasn't like gagging, but like Charlize, like good to see you girl. So for the mini challenge, the girls had to do a photo shoot using the like the ring doorbell challenge. It was kind of cute. It was random. I was like, okay, sure Jan. Safira Crystal won the mini challenge and I, let me tell you about Safira. Safira's gonna go far. I could see Safira winning the whole thing. She has this well put together, polished queen thing going on, but she's still humble. She's not cocky. For the mini challenge prize, she won $2,500. God damn. For the mini challenge, look, RuPaul is out here making money. Congratulations on the Emmy. So baby, the, the, the prices of the prizes are going up. For the maxi challenge, we did the talent show. And some of them were really cute. I was living for. Others, I, you know, I, I was like, this is what we came up with. Runway theme for episode one is reveal yourself. Where the girls have to reveal to another lovely, stunning outfit that is completely separate from the first look. The top two ended up being Sophia Cristal and Q. Do I agree with the top? The lip sync song was Break My Soul by Beyonce. Y'all know I'm not really a Beyonce fan. Um, the lip sync was cute. It was a missing something. And the, they had the top two lip sync, nobody went home, just like no one's gonna go home in episode two. The Maxi Challenge winner, who was also Safira, won $5,000. Imagine being on episode one of Drag Race. You won the Mini Challenge, the Maxi Challenge, and you have already banked $7,500. Dang! Okay, girl, I see you. We're going to go over each of the girls, we're gonna go over their looks, we're gonna go over their talent. If they were giving it to me, I'm gonna talk about them a little bit more. If that, if I can't remember, if they didn't give it to me, then baby, we, we gonna breeze on by. You know, it's no shade, it's no shade, it's just a lot of girls, and you know, I'm not trying to be here all day. So the first girl to walk in the work room for season 16 was Q. I, I like Q. I think that Q is gonna do good in this competition, but I think she's gonna stumble. 
She's going to stumble. She's going to stumble hard. And I'm not sure if she's going to fall to her demise or if that stumble, stumble is going to shake her and wake her up. Now, for her looks... She's a sickening queen. She's she's giving it to me. I like the entrance look. Now I will say about the entrance look, baby. These little these little bitty uh, Miley Cyrus knots. These little bitty knots. They needed to be bigger. Now the talent was cute. It was funny. Of course, you know you get major points if you make Rue laugh. It was a little uh, like a little puppet show thing with her face. It was cute. It was clever. It, it was missing like like. 7% of something. Um, the reveal yourself look was really cute. Q does make all of her at own outfits. I liked it, but I wasn't like floored. The second girl to walk into RuPaul's Drag Race season 16 was Tsunami Muse. Tsunami? Tsunami. Tsunami. Um, one thing I will say about Tsunami, I don't I feel like the accent is is a little fake. Like I know Tsunami has, and yes, Tsunami is the drag daughter of Candy Muse. We love Candy over here. Um, Tsunami, I like her. I want to like her, but it was it's something about her that's a little fake. I don't know if it's nerves and she's trying too hard. I don't, I don't really know what 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 the gig is, but there's definitely something. Um, sometimes I feel like she puts the accent on a little more than, than is really, truly really necessary. But judging off of her looks, um, I think she's going to struggle. I think she's going to struggle. She brands herself as the walking queen, uh, which I guess it was supposed to be the main part of her talent. Like her song was cute, but it wasn't talent show drag race cute. I, I'm tired of the girls coming in and not they don't have body. The proportions are not right. They come in, they look at manly. This this is this is female impersonation. Give it to me. Like females bodies come in all different looks and sizes. We know this, but <sighs> it's no shade. It's no shade. The third queen to walk in, Amanda Tory meeting. Amanda Tory meeting i think that is the most clever drag name i really like that i love a clever drag name um poor amanda though seems to be getting bullied by the girls and i'm interested to see what's going to go down when the two groups of girls meet each other next week poor amanda i like her it's something about amanda that is so sweet so genuine so endearing and while she may not be a look queen she still has really nice drag. She's funny. She's genuine. I want to see her go far. Um, I don't want to call her an underdog yet because I think she did pretty good. But if we're going to say she's an underdog, I'm rooting for the underdog. Um, the entrance look gave me Lucy LaDuca. Um, her talent, I'm going to be so honest with you, y'all. Baby, I don't, I don't remember the talent. I got to go back and look, look at the talent. What was the talent? I think I remember liking it. I just don't remember what it was. The reveal yourself, it started out well. Um, she definitely did reveal to something completely different than what she came out in. But like I said, not really a look queen, but she seems very sweet. I want to see more from her. She seems like she's going to be very funny. The next girl to enter the work room was Morphine Love Dion. Look, the mug is right, okay? Beautiful doll, in and out of drag. Drag queens are supposed to be full of themselves, but I feel like she's a little too full of herself. I feel like she needs to be humbled. Um, this interest look, pedestrian. The talent, it was, it was fine. The reveal look, I like when she came out in the towel and the head wrap. That was really cute. But when you reveal to a bathing suit, it's like, okay, you're wrapped in a towel. What, what was the surprise there? And then, baby, you gotta wear, you mean to tell me you came on the main stage of RuPaul's Drag Race and you didn't tuck? Somebody call Trinity and come get this girl because what is this tuck? And you didn't have on a boob? Girl, no, I, I'm sorry. Sorry about it, but no, ma'am. No, ma'am. The next girl to walk in, we had Safira Cristal. Now, let me tell y'all something about Safira. 
let me tell y'all something about Safira. Top three, if not the winner. Top three, yeah. Entrance look on point, okay? Personality on point, confidence on point. The talent show, I enjoyed the talent show. I I, I thought it was really clever how she changed the words to this really classic opera. Did a little bit of opera mixed with a little bit of comedy, but the, the, the titty plate, the booby plate, Girl, I, I, I look, when the girls see themselves on TV, they learn a lot. And I hope that what she learns from this is somebody lied to you several times when they let you walk out with that itty bitty teeny weeny titty boot plate. Next in the work room, we have Mirage. Let me tell y'all something, Mirage is one of my favorites. Now, a lot of people were split down the middle with Mirage's entrance look. They were like, oh, it's pedestrian, that's boring. She looked like Claire's threw up on her. I love this look. Maybe because it's something that I would actually wear. Like, I like it, it's so colorful, it's so fun, it's so early 2000s, it's so funny. Mirage is another one that seems very sweet, very down to earth, very genuine. The talent with the clacking of the heels, okay, Miss Ma'am, I, I liked it. Um, Michelle Visage told her that the routine needed to be a little more choreographed. It was, uh, but I like that she just kind of went out there and felt it and did kind of a free form because that, that's a true performer. You know, I didn't mind. I didn't mind that it was a, a that it was a re over rehearsed eight count after eight count after eight count. I like that she just went out there and felt it and gave it to us. Um, the reveal look, um, I don't think it was much of a reveal. Um, the, it, the look itself is beautiful. It's gorgeous. Uh, but the reveal to just be the titty boob, I don't know. I mean, and last but not least, the last girl to walk in the workroom on episode one is Dawn. I like Dawn. But with Dawn, I see a lot of other queens. I like her, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out exactly who she is because I'm seeing a lot of Willow Pill. I'm seeing uh, Trixie. I'm seeing um, Homegirl. What's her name? Oh, y'all know who. The point is, I'm seeing a lot of references to other queens, which is fine. Um, I think Dawn is another one that does all of her own looks, which that's a great talent. I like the looks. The looks were, were certainly there. The reveal was good. Um, I enjoy. I enjoyed the talent. She she's up there. I think she's gonna go far. I don't know how far yet. But she's definitely going to be a favorite with the fans, and so far, I mean, I think she—I think she's quirky and a little, little bit of a look queen. Like she's. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to episode two, darling. So once again, we have a talent show for the main event, and then we have a reveal yourself for the the for the runway, darling. So for the special guests in episode two, we have Derek Barry back again to host the talent show. Love Connie makes another appearance and T.S. Madison is there. Um, she is in the mini challenge. And she was, was she a judge too? I say, also T.S. Madison, congratulations on the Emmy. Like what? Oh, girl, okay, girl, you're different in doing it. And then the guest judge was Becky G. Becky G, now this, I was more excited about Becky. Maybe because, I mean, I've been following Becky since before she got discovered. Um, she was so gorge. I love the look. Her hair, her hair just really gave it to me. I was more excited about her than uh, Charlize Theron. But, you know, generation. You, you know what I'm saying? Demographics. You know what I'm saying? For this group of girls, their mini challenge was to get their photo taken at the She MV, which was like a parody of like the DMV. And it was so funny because one of the queens actually fell asleep. Like imagine being on episode one or your first episode, it's technically episode two, but be, imagine being on your first episode of Drag Race. First challenge, mini challenge nonetheless, but your first challenge, RuPaul is right there. And you just knocked out sleep. I mean, 
Ciao. Anyway, the winner of the mini challenge was Nymphia Wind. Nymphia Wind. The maxi challenge winner was Plain Jane. Which was really cute because they lip synced to Becky G's song, Shower. I love that song. It's one of my favorite songs from her. So, of course, she's like there. So, of course, like imagine lip syncing to her song in front of the art. Like, ah, like, oh my gosh. So, let's take a look at the girls and let's shred them. No, I'm just playing. Let's just take a look. We're not going to shred unless they deserve it. The first girl to walk in on episode two was Hershey LaCorgette. I think she is the sister of cornbread i don't think this is a drag daughter anyway she's related to y'all remember cornbread jate well here is hershey liqueur jate i like that name this that's that is a drag name if i've ever heard one um the entrants look cute i like hershey hershey is a father of two um married very charming, has this, this really great southern charm. The interest look was cute. Now, the talent show look, I was confused. I was like, baby, where is the hip? Uh, the talent show, it, it was it was fine. She did like this hair whip choreography to like an original song. It was fine. It's just the look was confusing. Um, It would have been great if it was a tear away. That would have made it better to me. To me, for me personally, I would have liked to see that. The reveal look. Stunning, beautiful. I I really liked it. Chocolate dripping. Mm, love it so much. The second girl to walk in was Plasma. I like Plasma. Plasma is another one though that's given me a lot of references to past queens. She walked in and I think we all said, "Oh, Jinx Monsoon," which I'm not mad about. Um, this is definitely going to be the theater queen of the season. She's going to get in her own way. Plasma is really, really good, really talented, has a lot of great looks. I think they make a lot of their own looks too. I can't remember somebody. I'm sure one of y'all is going to correct me. I like the looks. I like the nod to the old Hollywood with kind of like a modern twist. I like the whole package, but there's definitely some insecurity there. And I'm like, Plasma girl, don't, don't get in your own way. Um, the talent show was really great, but it was like, let me do everything that I know how to do all shoved in this two minute thing, um, which could be a good thing and a bad thing. Um, I like that she, I like that she took the risk to be like, okay, I'm going to show everything, but you know, a, a little editing never hurt nobody. Next to walk in, Geneva Carr, who was in the top two, the Texas dog coming to you all the way from Brownsville, Texas, uh, I believe born in Mexico, but start, lived in Brownsville, which is, you know, basically Mexico, if you know anything about Texas. And really, she was the only one who did, from what I remember, she was the only one who did an actual true reveal. She was the only one where there wasn't clothes and things lying on the floor. Now, a lot of people feel like with the, with the reveal, or a transformation, it, you're not supposed to just take stuff off. You're supposed to be able to transform the first outfit into a second outfit fully intact. And it does make it more magical. Um, I like that she is very Mexicana down, really representing the, the, the heritage. Um, I, like, I like that. I think she's gonna be middle of the pack. Then we had Plain Jane. Challenge Winor. Now, Plain Jane came into the workroom ready to fight. She is she is definitely giving uh, Willem energy. Y'all remember the Queen Willem? <sighs> Plain Jane is a fierce queen as far as looks go, but she comes for everybody. I don't know if she's just trying to get that Gia gun villain edit or if she's just trying to get a lot of screen time i don't know if this is who she really is um but the looks are definitely there but here is another one she she she's coming for katia's gig she's giving jimbo's gig and i also feel like she's doing a little bit of the twins remember sugar and spice with her talent show she did like this this hamburger 
ketchup and mustard. It was very funny. It was very entertaining, but it was, it, it, it gave, girl, you really copying some other queens. I'm interested in seeing when playing Jane meets these other girls next week, especially when she meets Sophia, baby. After playing Jane walks in Megami, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm going to be so honest with y'all. I'm not really feeling Megami. Moving right along. Next girl to walk in was Maya Iman LePage. I like Maya, but Maya is, is, I don't think she's ready to be on the show. Now, Maya was the one who fell asleep during the mini challenge. But what was so funny was she was knocked out sleep. But when she woke up and it was her turn to go take a picture at the DMV, oh, baby, she served. So I'm like, okay, you fell asleep. But when it was time to perform, baby, she was up and alert. She had her coffee. She had her Wheaties. She was giving energy. She was giving Red Bull. And that's all that matters. When it's time to perform, as long as you perform, the baby, take your little cat naps. Um, I love the entrance look. Very nice. The talent show was good, but it wasn't anything we haven't seen before. It was very like, okay, you did some flips. You did some dancing. The look is okay. Uh, it, you know, I'm like, okay, been there, done that. The reveal... I'm happy to see more. And the last queen to walk in the workroom for season 16 was Nymphia Wind. Nymphia, top two. She's another one I could see winning. Um, as long as she stays focused, as long as she doesn't let these girls tear her down. Because let me tell you something. She's another one. The girls are going to come for her. Because this is one of the most polished, if not the most polished queen here. This is, I think, the first queen from Taiwan. Um, she's been living in America, New York specifically, I think for about three years or something. Her talent to me should have won. It was beautiful. Oh, it was beautiful. I see why plain Jane won. But remember, the girls had to rate each other. So that kind of messed up probably who could have actually won but the talent was beautiful she did a traditional dance reveal was really good she revealed to three different looks i really like her now are we gonna get all banana looks all the time every outfit um i i i it, I mean, I'm okay with it if the looks are sickening, but they may not work our favor because you know how the judges feel about repeat themed looks. But when I looked at Nymphia's Instagram, this seems to be her gig, so we might be getting a lot of bananas. So the lip sync, let's just talk about this lip sync for a second. I lived for, now this lip sync was so funny. Um, it was Plain Jane and Geneva Carr. Uh, Geneva, I thought she would be a little bit more of a lip sync queen. Maybe the song threw her off. And I'm like, this is a Texas doll. Normally the Texas dolls are known for the lip syncing, aren't they? From what I remember. No? Shalo? Plain Jane, she revealed, you know, to that little skimpy little thought shorts and, and low cut t-shirt outfit. And Halfway through the little lip sync, the the, girl, the titty boo popped out. The titty boo just all dancing in the shower. The the the, the titty boo was a paid actor at that point. And I thought I was like, hey, is this a part of the bit? Is this like a joke? Is it? And Janine was like, she couldn't even dance because then the thing just flopping all around. And then so finally, Plain Jane realized, and she was like, oh oh, it was so funny. Uh, Plain Jane really did do a good job of the way she reacted to the boob. I don't think she's that good of an actress. I think she really didn't realize that the titty boob had popped out. It was funny. It was just, it was a good lip sync. So I guess I agree with Plain Jane winning. But girls, when you are lip syncing, don't be worried about what she's doing over here. See, Geneva was too worried about what Plain Jane was doing over there. She kept looking. She kept, baby, perform like you are the only one on that stage and, and deliver so Geneva might be one that gets in our head. But anyway, so playing Jane, Sephira, these seem to be the queens to really look out for. But then, of course, with the mini challenge, you had Nymphia Wind, Nymphia Wind 
won the mini challenge. So you got to look out for her too. But Safira won both the mini and the maxi challenge in episode one. So those are my thoughts so far. I can't wait to see episode three. Hopefully someone goes home soon. Hopefully this is not a 17 thousand episode long season look i love drag race but start sending them home i want to see somebody cry i want to see the girls packing up and leaving i don't know how this rating system is going to work i don't know how this immunity thing is going to work i'm sensing some twists and turns um i'm looking forward to snatch game and all of these things but yeah so these are my thoughts let me know in the comment section down below what you agree with what you disagree with who are some of your favorite queens which looks did it for you, which ones didn't. And yeah, I'll be back here next week for another review episode of episode three of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16. Bye!